Hello friends, I am Amir Anwanizami and today we are going to study laminated composite beam. So before this classes we have studied for the laminated composite plates using various theories like classical plate theory, first order shear deformation and all. But today we will start for the beam only. So laminated composite beam we will start with the <coughs> classical laminated plate theory that is also known as Euler Bernoulli. Euler Bernoulli beam theory. Okay. Then the first order shear deformation theory, it is known as Timoshenko beam theory. Then the third order shear deformation theory, or also called higher order shear deformation theory, okay. higher order shear deformation theory, and then the zigzag theory. So about zigzag theory, we know that linear zigzag theory that was initiated by Marco Dishu in 1984. Then Murakami also given in 1986. Then further uh, higher order zigzag theory was also given, and that was also initiated by Marco Dishuva in 1992. Okay, and then uh, Cohen parameter also given that Cohen parameter okay. uh, in 1993 as I remember. Okay, and then a lot uh, of further uh, improvement was there okay, by the various authors. They have given higher order. Uh, Zigzag theory. Uh, uh, today we will start with the classical laminated plate theory, and then uh, in the next class, inshallah, we will study the first order shear deformation, then the third order, and then we will move to the zigzag theory. So this is the classical laminated plate theory for laminated composite beams. So we are starting with the classical laminated plate theory first. So here uh, it is the displacement fields for the classical laminated plate theory. Okay. So we know that classical laminated plate theory is also uh, the, for the beam we are studying. So we know that it is the same as Euler Bernoulli, Euler Bernoulli beam theory, Bernoulli beam theory, where all those assumptions are valid. Okay. That plane sections remain plane. Okay. And plane sections uh, remain perpendicular before and after bending. Uh, and so on. There is no uh, the transverse stretching are not allowed, or in the transverse direction it is infinitely rigid. Okay. So these uh, assumptions in the first of my lecture for the plates I have given that. Okay. Or also for the beam I have given. I think from that uh, lectures you can see these assumptions uh, I have just described a lot. Okay. Here we are directly starting the with the displacement fields. So for this beam, we are having this displacement field in plane displacement u of x z equals to u naught of x. That is the stretching part minus z times del w naught of i del x, which is the bending part. Okay, and then w of x z equals to w naught of x, where it shows that the stretching is not allowed. Therefore, it's not the function of z anymore. Okay, so therefore, it is only a function of x w naught of x. Now we know that the strain displacement relations. Uh, we are having only epsilon xx because uh, in this theory we are not having any transfer uh, shear strain uh, because uh, in the assumptions we are having gamma xz equals to 0, shear strain is 0. Okay, So here uh, only the epsilon xx is uh, available Okay, and uh, this epsilon zz are also 0 because there is no stretching allowed in this. Okay. So remaining is only epsilon xx. So epsilon xx is uh, del u of xz by del x. Okay, this is del u by del x. So if you put this uh, u of xz, this value in it, we will get that del u naught of x by del x minus z times this. So we are getting, getting this strain, uh, strain displacement relations, and then we are having the stress strain relations that is sigma xx equals to q11 times epsilon xx where q11 uh, time, uh, of k is the material properties in each layer or lamina okay and then this is the epsilon xx del u naught by del x minus z times del u naught by del x square okay now we will apply the principle of virtual work so virtual work we know that internal uh, work in del epsilon of xx into sigma xx of k and volume integral okay where if you integrate x by z so along y we know that the width of the beam if you say that this is a beam okay 
so we are having this width as b okay and the depth or thickness of the beam as h okay and the length of the beam as l or a okay so if we do that we are having from x equals to 0 to a and thickness of the plate minus h by 2 to plus h by 2 del epsilon xx sigma xx of k dz dx so we will just integrate uh, and if we put the del epsilon xx uh, one by one so if we know that okay epsilon xx is this okay so what would be the del epsilon xx del of epsilon xx so del of epsilon xx will be nothing but del of del u naught of x by del x minus z times del 2 of del w naught of x by del x square okay so we are just putting up one first part and second part here in this equation so it is the first part del of del u naught by del x into sigma xx of k which integrated from z equals to minus h by 2 to z equals to plus h by 2 dz okay so this will be the first part and then minus del 2 w naught by del x square okay into z into sigma xx of k dz so if we see that okay if we integrate this sigma axis of k from this minus h by 2 plus h by 2 dz so this would be nothing but n xx okay and this would be kept as it is similarly here this would be kept as it is and this integration of sigma xx times z uh, integrated that is the bending m xx okay now uh, we know that external work done is nothing but the external load applied that is the distributed load into uh, virtual displacements in the transverse direction integral over the whole domain of the length of the beam x equals to 0 to x equals to a okay now uh, we have the net work done as equals to 0 so therefore uh, we, uh, after applying the integration by parts we finally get del n x by del x into del u naught minus this del 2 n x by del x by del w naught minus u naught of x by b into delta w naught whole integral. So from here we will get so after this uh, we will just uh, select the coefficients uh, of del u naught and then del w naught. So del u naught we are having only this. So the first governing equation is del n x by del x equals to 0. And then the second governing equation choosing a coefficient of delta w naught is del 2 m x x by del x square minus q naught of x by b that is equals to 0. Okay. So now n x x and n y uh, m x x. We know that n x x is nothing but uh, integral, nothing but integral of sigma x x with respect to z. It is integral of k dz. Okay. So we will see here that nxx equals to minus h by 2 to plus h by 2 integrated for the z and z equals to plus h by 2 sigma xx of k dz and uh, uh, we know that minus h by 2 to plus h by 2 along the thickness in the laminated composite plates uh, if you see this the cross section we have enlarged it so we can see first layer second layer third layer if it is of the three layer so each layer z1 to z2 then z2 to z3 and z2 to z4 it would one by one it would add up so therefore we have written k equals to one to number of layer okay zk to zk plus one where zk may be the if k equals to one then it is z1 to z2 then in the another loop it would run from z2 to z3 and uh, then in the third layer it would go z3 to z4 so that is z3 to z4 so one one of k into del u naught by del x dz minus z times this into this so we know that this integration would be uh, uh, simplified and this would be the final value uh, q11 of k into zk plus 1 minus zk okay and then summation from one layer to another so we will get this value as a11 okay that is the material properties and the geometric properties okay of the laminate and then here uh, we will see the second one this also the material properties and the geometric properties which we are knowing so through all the layer each layer summing up so we will get this b11 that is a constant value okay which is known to us 
okay so we get the nxx as a11 into del u naught by del h minus v11 times del 2 w naught of h by del h square okay then we know mxx is nothing but z times sigma xx integrated from minus h by 2 plus h by 2 then it is nothing but the summation k equals 1 to number of layer and z k to z k plus 1 and after integration we are having this integrating this value so we will get this d11 and this as d11 which is known to us the material properties and elimination properties and this del u naught by del x and del 2 w naught by del x square okay now substituting back equation 10 and 11 in equation 8 and 9 okay so if this is equation 11 and this is equation 10 which is nxx okay so we are putting back in equation 8 and 9 so nxx we are putting here nxx value and then equation 11 in equation 9 nxx so finally we are getting this governing equation a11 times del 2 u naught by del x square minus b11 times del 3 w naught by del x cube and similarly b11 times del 3 u naught by del x cube minus b11 and del 4 w naught by del x to the power 4 equals to q naught x by d. So we are getting this governing equation of b using the classical animated plate theory. So further we can also say that we here only uh, we we are having u of x u of x g okay in plane displacement we will get the plot for the in plane displacements then w of x g is nothing but w naught of x only so we will get the uh, transfer displacements okay and uh, we have also epsilon x x and then we are having sigma x x okay but uh, we didn't have the gamma x z or we can say that is zero from the constitutive equations therefore sigma x z also from the constitutive equation constitutive equation we get this also equals to zero okay but we know that uh, from the equilibrium equations from integration of the integrating equilibrium equations equilibrium equations equations we get sigma x z also and uh, that is if we integrate del sigma xz by del x and del sigma xx by del x plus del sigma xz by del z okay equals 0 therefore del sigma xz by del z equals minus of del sigma xx by del x okay and then integrating both sides with respect to z or dz dz okay. integrating with respect to both sides dz so finally we will get sigma xz would be equals to and which is function of x and z both so therefore integrating this uh, we will get some constant value okay so which would be function of x and minus uh, just integrating that del sigma xx by del x with respect to gz. So we will have this. Okay. So from here we will find the sigma xz. So from the equilibrium equations we will get that. Okay. So now uh, we will see the MATLAB code for this. So here the MATLAB code is written for the laminated composite beam using classical laminated plate theory where the length of the uh, beam is given and the width of the beam is given okay so uh, now we will run this i think this is not required here and this is also not required here okay so we will run here let's see what the results we are getting So it is plotting the transverse displacements, then it is plotting the in-plane displacements, okay. then it is sigma xx, it is plotting, 
then I think it is sigma xj using the equilibrium equations. Okay. So these four plots, this fi final plot is for the transfer shear stress sigma xj, which is uh, calculated using the equilibrium equations, integrating the equilibrium equations. Okay. Then we are having this sigma xx, that is the implant stress. So it is implant normal stress. We are having this sigma xx value. Then we are having the implant displacements u of xz. Okay. That is shown here for the three layer, which is the inceptions remain plane before and after bending. Okay. So the drawback is that it does not catch uh, the warping effect. Okay. Or the zigzag effect of the plane. And this is the constant transverse displacement. So we are ending here and shall in the next lecture we will study the first of order shear deformation theory for the laminated composite beam and then further third order and zigzag theory we will see. Okay, thank you.